Okay, so what this instrument does is it's going to measure the light that's absorbed by a part of a photoreceptor cell that contains the visual pigment, which is responsible for making that cell sensitive to light. And this screen right here is captured by a camera up here, which is infrared sensitive. So that's an actual infrared image of part of a retina that's been macerated, freeing up these cellular elements. And these long elements right here are called outer segments, and that's where the visual pigment is. And so you have to do this in infrared light or deep red light, because in the act of measurement, you're destroying the pigment. So you want to do it quick, and you want to use very small amount of light. So to start off with, you can see that there's a little, I'll put an arrow on it right here. There's a little rectangle right here. Hopefully you can see that. And that's the measuring beam. That measuring beam is coming from a tungsten light passing through a device called a monochromator that separates the white light into its constituent colors. There's a motor, and as that motor turns, it changes the wavelength or the color of the light, which is going to change the color of that beam. But to start off with, we have to run a baseline. Okay. So right now, I have that beam in an area of the preparation where there's no cellular debris at all. So what I'm going to do now is basically turn the background eliminator off, and I'm going to direct that signal to a measuring device. So I'm going to collect the baseline. So right now it's actually scanning. We can't see the baseline being collected. But it has started at 750 nanometers, which is deep red, and scanned all the way down to 350 nanometers, which is in the near ultraviolet, and then back again. As it scans, it samples the signal and stores that and creates a baseline. I'm now going to look and see how my baseline is. So right now, what you see appearing on the screen is a flat line because I'm now sampling and subtracting my sample and my baseline. So I expect to see essentially a flat line because I'm not absorbing anything. So now what I'm going to do is go back to my screen and I'm going to move the preparation so that one of those outer segments is laying over the beam. Let's pick that one right there. So I'm moving the preparation. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the beam is now passing through this cell right here. So now the question is, as I scan, what wavelengths are being absorbed by that cell? So I will go and we shall see. One of the um, problems that we're having right now is because of the light necessary for filming, um, do this. Yeah. So the baseline, unfortunately, wasn't accurate because we have this red light coming on. So we're going to try it again. Photomultiplier to if the detector gets too much light, then it won't work. So let's try this again. So I'm going to run a baseline again. So again, it's scanning back and forth.
the center of the screen. We'll see whether it works this time. Just scan back and forth, and it absorbs very, very little out here in the red. And as I move into this green, blue green part of the spectrum, it absorbs and then starts to go up here in the narrow and the violet. If this visual pigment is in a particular photoreceptor cell, then that represents the sensitivity of that photoreceptor cell to various wavelengths of light. So this cell would be very insensitive in the red, but it would be maximally sensitive here in the blue-green. Now one thing that happens when visual pigments are exposed to light, even in the physiologically normal situation, is they're actually destroyed. The act of absorbing a photon of light destroys that molecule of visual pigment. If it wasn't for the fact that we continually replace visual pigment through metabolic activity, okay, we would go blind very quickly once all the visual pigment was gone. 